You're watching Ruroni K95's movie review on the Goonies. Hi Ruronis, this is your pal Ruroni K95 here, and once again we get to cover another movie review from the 80s with my review on the Goonies. The Goonies is a 1985 American adventure comedy film co-produced and directed by Richard Donner from the screenplay by Chris Columbus, based on a story by executive producer Steven Spielberg in the film a the Band of Kids Who Live in the Goondocks neighborhood of Astoria, Oregon, attempt to save their homes from the foreclosure and doing so, they discover an old treasure map that takes them on an adventure to unearth the long-lost fortune of one eye Willie, a legendary 17th century pirate, during the adventure. They are chased by a family of criminals who wanted the treasure for themselves. So let's review this movie on The Goonies. Let's begin. Facing foreclosure of their homes in the Goondocks area of Astoria, Oregon, to expand the entry club... A group of children who call themselves the Goonies gather a final or a final weekend together. The Goonies include Optimus lead Goonie Mike Walsh, Mikey Walsh, his older brother Brandon, the inventive Data, the talkative Mouth, and the overweight Cole. Let's ch chunk. Rummaging through the Walsh's attic, they come across a 1632 doubloon and an old treasure map porting to lead to the famous pirate One-Eyed Willie's hoard, located somewhere nearby when, whom Mikey considers to be an original Goonie. The kids invade, evade Brandon and make their way to an abandoned restaurant on the coast that coincides with the map. Brandon soon follows alongside Andy, a cheerleader with a crush on him, and Steph, Andy's friend. The group quickly discovers that the reluctant restaurant is a hideout of the Fratelli crime family, Francis, Jake, and their mother, Mama Fratelli, which, he, coincidentally, I mean, isn't me or does Mama Fratelli from the Goonies look a lot like Angry Grandma, which is, you know, from the Angry Grandma videos, you know, her and Jake in the video who did the reenactment to the Goonies. We'll get to that in just a moment for this particular... So anyways, the Goonies find a tunnel in the basement and followed it, but Chunk is captured by the Fratillis and imprisoned with their deformed and immensely strong younger brother, Sloth. The Fratillis interrogate Chunk until he reveals where the Goonies have gone and begin pursuit. Chunk is left behind with Sloth, but be friends with him. After Sloth frees both of them, Chunk calls the police, and he and Sloth follow the Fertilis. The Goonies evade several deadly booby traps along the, the tunnels while staying ahead of the Fertilis. Finally, they reach to the grotto where Willie, Willie's pirate ship, the Inferno, is anchored. The group discover the ship is filled with treasure and they start filling their pockets, but Mikey warns them not to take any on a set of scales in front of Willie, considering that to be their their tribute to him. As they leave the ship, the Fratellis appear and strip them of their loot. They make the Goonies walk the plank until Chunk arrives with Sloth and distracts the Fratellis long enough until the, for the Goonies to jump overboard. And you, in the part where you see Sloth was wearing a Superman t-shirt in this particular movie, which is, at this point, which is, not coincidentally, you would expect seeing in the Goonies as well. The Fertilis proceed to grab all the treasure they can, including those on Willie's scales. This triggers another booby trap that causes the grotto to cave in with Sloth's help. The Goonies and Fertilis barely escape what you see in the movie The Goonies as well. Yep. The two groups emerge on Astoria's beach when they reunite with the Goonies' families and the police. The Fertilis are arrested, but, but Chunk prevents Sloth from be also being taken. He invites Sloth to live with him, which he accepts as the kids describe their adventures to their parents. The Walsh's housekeeper, Rosalita, discovers that Mar Mikey's marble bag is filled with gems he took from the ship and had not been seized by the Fertilis. Mikey's father triumphantly rips up the foreclosure papers, declaring that they have enough money to negate the foreclosure. 
As the Goonies celebrate, they see the Inferno have broken free from the grotto, sailing off on its own in the distance. And and that's how you end this movie with the song, um, particularly The Goonies' Are You Good Enough by Cindy Lauper that you hear at the end of the movie The Goonies. So that's my review on The Goonies. The old cast, speaking of which, for the production of The Goonies, however, the old cat at Clatsop County Jail, where the scene of the Fertility Jailbreak took place, the site is now a home to the Oregon Film Museum, which is probably located in Oregon, which is, at this point, which has per particularly now become a historical landmark in located in Oregon in the United States of America. That's how the... Because this was filmed... In, in back in 1985, especially for this particular movie, like The Goonies as well. Much of the filming was done on location in Astoria, Oregon, the setting of the film. Principal photography on The Goonies began on October the 22nd, 1984, and lasted five months. They were an additional six weeks of audio dubbing recording. The shooting script was lengthy, more than 120 pages, to which several sequences were eventually cut from the final theatrical version, which was probably in the final film. During the film's denouncement, engine is made of an octopus, which refers to a scene that was excised from the final cut, especially when whenever they made this movie like The Goonies. This movie was produced by Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment. Warner Brothers released the film theatrically on June 7, 1985 in the United States of America, which is particularly, which I can know for... Because this movie was directed by Richard Donner, who was known for the movie Lady Hawk and Lethal Weapon movies, especially. And he's also known for The Omen and Superman, starring Christopher Reed in that, uh, Reeve in that one. But he, but Richard Donner is also known for Lady Hawk, which ironically, Lady Hawk was released on April 12th, 1985, which is probably my all-time favorite movie from the 80s. But for The Goonies, however, The Goonies was released on June 7th, 1985, which is probably two months after the release of the movie Lady Hawk with Matthew Broderick, Rucker Hauer, and Michelle Pfeiffer was released around at the same year as well. However, in the documentary The Making of the Goonies, Richard Donner noted both the difficulties and pleasures of working with so many child actors. He praised them for their energy and excitement, but also said that they were also... Uh, they were also unruly when brought together. As a result, the documentary frequently showed him coaching the actors and revealing some techniques he used to create realistic performances. One of these tricks involved One-Eyed Willie's pirate ship, which is was actually a full-size replica of a pirate ship created under the direction of production designer J. Michael Riva as well. Yep. Richard Donner restricted the actors from seeing the ship until they filmed the scene wherein it is revealed to their characters. The characters' first glimpse of the ship was also the fir actor's first view at bringing it about more realistic performance. However, that particularly scene the, in the final cut was actually the second take due to the cast feeling so overwhelmed at first sight that the scene had to be reshot. It was later noted that the entire set was scrapped after the shooting because they could not find anyone who wanted it at this point, as if they were for this particular for the movie The Goonies. Yep, because this movie was released in 1985, which is probably two within two months after the movie Lady Hawk was released around at the same time as well and also as well as odin photon sailor starlight in which is probably the anime movie which is only in J which is probably only in japan as well yep yep so in his book there and back again sean astin claimed that donner and steven spielberg were like co-directors on the film as he compared and contrasted their styles when directing scenes as well some of the on-location was done in Astoria, Oregon. The interior, exterior, and exterior 
of the old Gladstop County Jail features a holding place of Jake Fertilli at the start of the film. The building was later converted into an, the Oregon Film Museum, which opened on the 25th anniversary of The Goonies with memorabilia from this and other local films as well. The museum where Mikey's father works is in reality the G Captain George Flavel House Museum. The Walsh family home is a real home on the eastern end of the town. The road leading to the home was closed to tours in 2015. The scenes along with the coast were filmed in Oregon, but they were considerably distance from Astoria. The Goonies Bicycle to e Equala State Park in reality is over 26 miles south of or Astoria, Oregon. Yep. And then finding the start location of the map using a haystack rock as a guide underground scenes were filmed at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California, including the Connervous set where the Goonies find One-Eyed Willie's ship, which was on stage 16, especially. One of the largest soundstage in the United St sound stages in the United States, the final scene was shot at Goat Rock State Beach in Sonoma County, California. The film was also marked West Takahashi's first major picture, motion picture as an animation supervisor for Industrial Light and Magic as well for this particular movie, The Goonies, as well. Yep. Warner Brothers released the film in cinemas across the United States on June 7th, 1985, especially for this particular movie, The Goonies. Roger Ebert gave the film three, out of, three stars out of four and called the film a smooth mixture of uh, the usual ingredients from Steven Spielberg action movies made special because of the high energy performances of the kids who have the adventures. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Treeburn also awarded three stars out of four and wrote, After a dull start, some kind of a minor movie miracle takes a place and the Goonies gets it to act together as the kids stop raiding wisecracks and get closer to finding their long lost pirate treasure thereby to save help save their parents' homes. Only then, we do not accept the Goonies for what it is, a funny, funny juvenile wind-up toy about kids in perilous comic book situations as well. Yep. The critics always explained about how this movie... But for the box office of the Goonies, however, the Goonies grossed about $9 million in its opening weekend in the United States of America, second on the, on the charts behind Rambo First Blood Part Two. It grossed about $63.4 million in the United States and Canada, placing it among the top the high, the top 10 highest grossing films of 1985, and the $60.6 .6 million overseas for a worldwide gross of $124 million. Ramsey won a Saturn Award for the Best Supporting Actress as for her role as Mama Fertilli at the 7th Youth and Film Awards, now known as the Young Artists Awards. Aston's portrayal of Mikey won the award for the best starring performance by a young actor in the motion picture. Cohen Feldman and Plimpton were also nominated for awards for their performances in The Goonies. The film itself was nominated for the best adventure motion picture. And yet, the, this per movie has, has been experienced how it's been playing from all over the world. I mean, the sheer beauty for this movie, The Goonies, however, it was filmed in or Astoria, Oregon, which is probably in the United States of America, and yet this movie was directed by Richard Donner, who's also worked on the Lethal Weapon movies, as well as The Omen and Lady Hawk and other of his movies. And it, the screenplay was done by Christopher Columbus, who worked on both of the Home Alone movies and The Breakfast Club as well. So that's going to be it for my movie review on The Goonies for today. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's my thoughts on this. It's been a while since I've seen this movie. Uh, I like the scene where where basically the where Chunk offers Sloth a baby Ruth candy, as well as Sloth offers you know, chunk Rocky Road ice cream because I have it on DVD. It's been a while since I watched this movie, I guess. Hope subscribe for content. My anime plan, link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter, Facebook. If you have a Twitter, Facebook account, all social media, be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on this video. Feel free to leave it in the comments in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Ruining Can I Feel free to join my channel, especially if you're doing on my channel. Hit the notifications bell button, and I got another movie review coming up for next time. What I have here in mind. Stay tuned for my next movie review. I got another movie coming up on Halloween with my movie review on Zombieland. Until next time.